be uh, the progenitors of what the future of this uh, conference title is going to look like, and that'd be Southern Utah and Portland State. Uh, a couple other teams have had out outstanding years, and, and some of the teams were picked at or near the top are not as playing as well as they hope, and so there's still a couple weeks left for everybody to have a better feel for what 2015 means. Uh, in our case, obviously it begins and ends with one thing, turnovers. Uh, we're, gonna, we're on pace to set uh, a school's all-time record for turnovers. If we don't slow down it, uh, and how reckless we are with the ball at quarterback. So for us, uh, the entire focus on this game Saturday will be continue to run a wide open offense, but take care of the football. You were pretty positive last week about how Delver was performing in practice and how upbeat everyone was. Is that still the case? Same, same. I'm, I'm very much impressed that Tanner is continuing to grow. Uh, the decisiveness by which he takes a shotgun snap and spits the ball is uh, indicative of the fact he's becoming more and more comfortable with what we're calling. Um, the other quarterbacks have also started to perform very, very well. We've got a good look at Trey Pilster at quarterback, and uh, Michael's closer and closer and closer every single day. I don't know if he'll be available on Saturday or not. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. What is the record, school record for turnovers? I don't know, but it's not. We're. I know we're. I know we're getting close to it. Now, I, I keep a pretty close eye on all that stuff. So uh, I know we're. It, because what we're not going to do, hopefully, is we're not going to throw down or slow down how we throw it. I mean, we want to be able to spit the ball and be able to spit the ball accurately and throw the ball uh, to a receiver in stride and get big plays, just like we did last year. I mean, last year was the preeminent style of the offense we want to play, and we have receded this year because we're not throwing the ball fast enough quick enough, accurate enough, and making runs after the catch, which was the which was the recipe for success in last year's offense. So how does your quarterback balance the idea of you want to be aggressive, but you don't want turnovers? Well, that's the knife edge. That's the knife edge of playing the position. You want to be able to be great, but not hazardous to your own team. And right now, at times, we've been very hazardous. And we go through a series of, of time in a game, but all of a sudden, it's like, <laughs> I mean, if we keep calling passes, we'll throw 16 interceptions. It always seems to happen near the end of the second quarter and into the third quarter before we settle back down and, and stop being uh, less than smart with the ball. I like the way we play early. You know, we don't we don't we don't make a lot of mistakes early. But coaching runs. I said, didn't I say this a couple weeks ago? Coaching runs out at about 10 minutes into a game. It really does. The game plan runs out, and after that, it's you are what you are, and. We're, we're not good enough at quarterback yet to master our offense. Our record's two and six. And that's just a, it's a work in progress with Sheldon and, and our quarterback core. And, and those guys are, they're, they're adamant that we're getting, they're getting better. And, and I see progress every single day. But until they rise, we stay stuck. Was the bye week important for them? Have that week off to, to I think the bye week was important for me to make sure that we would run enough practice reps to believe that what we're teaching will work with the core of guys we got. And I'm, like I felt last Wednesday, I, I'm even more uh, excited today about about where we're at, especially you know with the return of Brock Malcolm to full form. It's given us another dynamic in our offense, and we're throwing the ball accurately to guys who can make plays. And Brock is one of those guys. Mike, can you give us a thumbnail on what you've seen from Montana? They seem to be very inconsistent this year. They'll have some really good games, and then they'll have some games where they're turning the ball over just like ISU. It, it's a mirror. They're, with, they're exactly the same. If you look at the numbers, our numbers are almost exactly the same, except at turnovers. I mean, exactly. Look, rushing yards, I think we're within three yards of each other. Passing yards, we're within a couple yards of each other. Total plays, we're within a couple total plays of each other. We are exact mirror images of each other. We have not been good, either team has been good enough at quarterback to be able to be a, pre, a premier team in this conference, flat out. What's been the difference that's allowed them to stay in contention in the big sky? Defense. They play better defense. They're better in their front. Uh, their front seven is, is pretty salty. Uh, Tyrone Holmes is an excellent defensive end. The safeties are, are not getting push by and run by and their corners have been pretty competitive. Their defense is better than ours. <coughs> ours has been savaged by injuries and youth and ineffective play. And it's something I think that the one thing we're seeing though is we're seeing better numbers than we've produced over the years uh, defensively, yet 
we're still feeling the ill effects of, of not being able to be great at safety. And for us, quarterback and safety determine what we are, and we are what we are at two and six. Not good at quarterback, and not good at safety. Speaking of quarterback, Mike, Montana is who's multiple quarterbacks this year. Who are you preparing for? We'll prepare for all of them. We run the same plays. Uh, we run the same scheme. And our defense guys don't know the difference in our quarterbacks between Tanner Guller and Michael Sanders and Trey Pilster and, and, uh, and Robert Quinslow. They really don't. They just line up and play the formations and play the plays and read your keys and go with the ball. Whoever, whoever plays quarterback, it's immaterial to us. Travis, what, is Tyron, what are his strengths as defensive end? Well, he's slight. He gets off the ball. He turns the corner. He works well with his hands while his feet are moving. Same thing as we've already seen from a couple good defensive ends in our conference. You know, the ability to work with your hands while your feet are moving upfield, that's a, that's a good senior combination. He's a senior defensive end and a guy we're very wary of. Sacks. Is it, so is it more than him? Is he just part of the threat? Uh, their, front, their front is real good. They're not a big pressure team, but their front can get after the ball. And they've gotten after uh, a couple quarterbacks that are pretty young. Uh, NAU's quarterback's a true freshman. You play in, in Missoula for the first time where the crowd is the 12th man. and It's, a, it's an eye-opening experience for you. And hopefully uh, our Richard freshman quarterback playing at home won't be intimidated by their crowd that travels so well. Yeah, talk about that, Craig. And what do you want to tell fans here in Pocatello? Tell them. Buy a ticket. Keep the Grizzlies out of our building. <laughs> They're going to travel with two or 3,000 people. They always do. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, from Montana turn this into a Salt Lake recruit uh, shopping weekend by stopping off at uh, Holt Arena. And we want to make sure that our fans outnumber their fans and make more noise when they have the ball than when we have the ball. Okay, he's listed on your, on your TV. Is, is he back? And we'll just have to wait and see. Cody Sorensen. Cody Sorensen, be a wait and see. Is, he, is, it, is it a game time situation? I can't tell you. Good question. Keep coming though. I love it. <laughs> I, I love it. It's it's a it's a it's a good dance, but uh, you know, as long as the NCAA says I don't have to, I don't have to. So I just want to do it the right thing. I, I'll let everybody know in pregame about kind of what I think. We'll go for there. I'm surprised. Why'd you name Hannah Gullah the starter? Uh, because maybe uh, the other quarterback's not quite ready to go yet. Maybe. I, I couldn't tell you for sure. <laughs> Mike, you know, Montana's tried to play the up tempo spread offenses. Our offense? Yeah. Basically. Basically. It's the same. They, they look exactly the same. If you close your eyes and didn't know which uniform was which, it'd look exactly the same. I was going to ask are they doing the same thing so? Even though they have the multiple quarterbacks this year? Yeah, they do exactly the same things that we do. It's, I mean, Mark, he could not, I mean, I, I could take a look at every one of their plays and say, oh, there's uh, Navy Wap, uh, there's uh, Grant Viper. They're really front our same plays. I mean, it's like play for play. Is that an advantage for both defenses? Well, I don't think it's a. I think it's an advantage for both offenses simply because they know the defenses know they still can't stop it. You know, there there are certain things that both that this style of offense does that defensively you just try to hold on, and and, and make things happen. And the last time the Grizzlies came here, they were, they were able to sack us, keep us keep the ball in front of them. We were unable to do anything. Thirty five to nothing shutout. So we know defensively they have a core of defense that will play. Uh, against a, a spread offense, it's pretty solid. They won't be, uh, they won't be nervous about facing our offense. They face their own offense every day. They've got a couple of really good receivers. Best good tech punch in the, with their tailback. What's, how do you face both those challenges? It's the same way we are. You know, we got two really good receivers with K Dub and and Madison. We got the best tail the tailback led the conference in rushing last year. So, I mean, you talk about two mirror images. I mean, this is the right foot playing the left foot. I mean, it's it's really something, really really cool. So Mike, what's this, what decides the game? Like? Punts, total number of punts and turnovers. Can't punt, you punt, you give up. It's a turnover. Each team's got to got to treat a punt as a turnover, and then turnovers obviously eat themselves. And you, you go through all the numbers, look at all the plays, and look at everything, and then you go to that big total number of turnovers that we have had this season, and you go, aha, aha. Special teams-wise, how have you gotten better in the last couple of weeks? No. 
we, our scheme is better. David Fia Fia has got a, done a good job of putting us in a place. We're still, uh, we're still uh, emotionally wounded uh, at kicker and punter. We're just emotionally wounded from the shots that we took in the in the uh, Las Vegas game, and it has has had a deleterious effect on our ability to kick the ball and punt the ball. So, no, we have we. We still cannot reach the end zone with our kickoffs, which is a, a terrible problem for us. Uh, last time we played, we gave the ball at short porch all the time to Sacramento State. I mean, look where they, they started their average field position was a 43-yard line. We had one touchback, but the rest of the time they were playing arena ball. 65 yards the end zone, you can win a lot of games doing that, and we proved it. Montana is one of those career programs in the big sky. Is it, it's fun to play that. Yeah, it's always fun to play. Well, I'd say it this way. It's always fun to play the Grizzlies. I greatly admire what they've done in their program. At one time, the Grizzly program was like this, but it was back in the 70s. Uh, they, have risen, they have risen with the arrival of Coach Reed in 1986 uh, to be one of the top programs in the United States on a consistent, considerable basis. And that tradition continues because those players put on their gear with an expectation. At Idaho State, we don't have those same expectations, which is why it's so... <coughs> uh, it's so daunting to have slid from 8-4 and four back to this. It means that we've got still a lot of work ahead of us in terms of building and, and maintaining a program. How do you do that? Got to be better all the time. For us, again, the catalyst by which we are going to always be successful comes from two positions, quarterback and safety. And until we get a core of safeties that can cap our defense, prevent long runs, Stop, stop blank open field plays in the back end. We are going to continue to struggle defensively. We're looking at it as a recruiting issue now. We're looking at it as a performance issue. We're looking at it as a teaching issue. We're looking at it as an overall planning issue about what we're doing. Our safety play in this program since I have been here is god awful. And our quarterback play has been very considerable, yet we have slid this year. This has been our worst quarterback play given the total number of interceptions we've thrown with the quality of offensive line we have, that we've had since I've been here. We knew that was going to happen. I'm disappointed we were not able to correct it in the month of October, but I'm positive that we have fixed the quarterback situation in November as we've faced these last three ball games. At safety, that issue's got to be resolved only in time. We have young safeties that are learning how to play. We've got one, VG, one veteran KG safety that when he got hurt last week, we fell apart when he got one off the field. And we have another great safety who's waiting in the wings coming off of a, a long year of, of being unavailable. So our safety situation is probably the issue number one in our overall program at this date. You mentioned the quarterback didn't evolve in October the way you wanted it to. Is that coaching, performance, or uh, unavailability? All of it. And, and experience. Just the, the distance from being a passer or from being a thrower to being a passer is tiny, but it's a huge distance in the reality of the effectiveness of the play. And it's that micro inch that we're lacking yet at quarterback. I see some of it in practice, now I gotta see it in the game. We cannot hold the ball. I mean, our starting quarterback went down because he held the ball. And that half second, that micro second that he holds it instead of spit and throwing the ball to an open area is a distance between two and six and six and two. And that's that's the cool part about running an offense like this, man. Your quarterback's brain has got to be going, and if the software is a little slow, bad things happen.